All righty. Hello, hello. Welcome to yet another module um, of Walt Disney and children's literature. For this module, we will be looking at The Little Mermaid. And for my title on this module, I said a tale as old as time. A little pun there. Couldn't help myself. I had to do that. All right. And so we read The Little Mermaid um, this semester in class um, for um, English 3023. Um, but we're going to be talking about the movie adaptation and kind of digging deeper into that today. So to begin, what's the story? Um, growing up, um, The Little Mermaid was one of my favorite um, Disney movies just because I think it explores a lot of possibilities and a lot of questions that many kids and many grown-ups have about the sea, the ocean, um, and we kind of see that questioning, that pondering, that mysterious element of the water in many um parts of literature as well. Um, the ocean is just kind of this ominous place that isn't explored and we still haven't explored all of it today um, in today's day age. So the story of The Little Mermaid is about a mermaid who lives under the sea, under the sea. And um, she, her name's Ariel and um, her dad is like a mermaid king, the merman king. Um, and she desperately wants to um, live on the earth, on land, walk around. Um, and she one day falls in love with Prince Eric, who is a human, and she sees him and she's a mermaid. So she's tempted to go to um, Ursula, which is kind of like the sea witch. And Ursula says, okay, I will get you legs and you will have legs, but you will be mute, but you have to convince Prince Eric to fall in love with you. Um, all this stuff. Otherwise, I will own you. And so all this while she goes and she um, convinces Prince Eric to fall in love with her. Um, along with her friends um, that we see in other sea creatures. And um, in the end, um, Ursula sees that Prince Eric truly is falling in love with Ariel, and this is putting a damper on Ursula's plan. And so Ursula presents herself as this beautiful woman, and she has um, her, she has Ariel's voice. And so she uses Ariel's voice and tries to swoon over Prince Eric, but Prince Eric catches on. Eventually Prince Eric kills Ursula and the two live happily ever after. And the two worlds between land and water are united. All right. So getting into the history of the Little Mermaid. Um, this was actually based on a fairy tale of Danish origin written down by Hans Christian Andersen that we've read um, and talked about in the Fables and Folklore Unit of um, English 20, 3023. And so this was published in 1873. Um, the Little Mermaid was part of a, a collection of other children's stories called um, Fairy Tales Told for Children. Um, so this title um, kind of made me stop and think about the intent and purpose of children's literature. Um, these these um, particular tales were written down and meant to be told to two children. Um, additionally, this is a tragic tale with a happy ending. And so this, um, this is a lot of the reason why this um, form of literature gets talked about is because it kind of breaks free from the norms of literature. We do, we do see a lot of um, tragedies and um, this, um, this story, you know, follows the format of a tragedy up until the very end where we get kind of a happy ending um, with um, Ariel or the Little Mermaid, because she's doesn't she is not given a name in the um, written down version in, in the story. Um, she um, is able to ascend to heaven eventually, um, and so she kind of makes an ultimate sacrifice, and she's able to um, break free from that. So. Um, this uh, story, The Little Mermaid, um, had a very big cultural impact, even um, just without the Disney movie. There's a statue in Copenhagen um, that you, we see um, down here on the um, bottom right. 
um, in Copenhagen, Denmark to honor where the story was first written. Um, it was influenced by Undyne, which is a, another um, kind of story about um, a mermaid and giving a, like gaining a soul through marriage, um, a human soul. Um, and so it brings in this question of what can be interpreted from marriage being situated as such an important element of the Little Mermaid's life. Um, a lot of these um, stories and um, one of the elements that we've been discussing a little bit is um, the Disney princess. And so, um, you know, a lot of the Disney princesses are um, highly criticized because it situates a woman, it situates women as um, this figure that needs to be saved by a man or, you know, a reliance on marriage for financial security, financial and emotional security um, and comfort. Um, so it's important to think about, you know, what values and ideas are we instilling through our children's literature? Um, because if these are the stories of what children are reading, and if this is what they think love is supposed to be like, then this is what they're going to think it is in the future. Um, there have been many adaptations of the story in a different media. Obviously, The Little Mermaid, Disney's version um, is very, very popular, but there have been um, musicals and other plays and stuff that have um, told the story as well. So Disney's adaptation is an animated musical fantasy released in 1989. Um, so Disney attempted to adapt the tale many times before its release, but it never really just never really got anywhere. Um, but when it finally did, it was a commercial success um, for Disney, and um, it raised 84 million in box off in the off in the box office at its initial release, and um, it 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 marked the start of Disney's renaissance, which we've talked before. Um, the Disney Renaissance was a return to animated films, and um, it kind of sparked the success of this era of um, the Disney's renaissance of this kind of return to um, these animated films. Um, it won Academy Awards for Best Musical Score and Best Original Song. Um, best Original Song was for Under the Sea, um, which is one of the most popular Disney songs, I would argue. Um, additionally, there's a live action release set for um, 2023. Obviously, we've seen um, Disney kind of in another kind of renaissance of their own of reviving kind of these classic Disney movies and making live action versions of them. So The Lion King, um, Mulan, and um, The Little Mermaid is um, one that has definitely caught some media attention um, because obviously these Disney um, live action revivals have been very successful for the company um, and they have cast um, Halle Berry as um, the um, lead actress or to play Ariel. Um, and so that is a very um, big accomplishment. Um, and anyways, um, an abundance of resources were dedicated to the animation of The Little Mermaid, um, more so than any other Disney movie at the time. Um, since this was Disney's first kind of return back to Disney, like, I mean, return back to animated films, they wanted to make it a big comeback. So they had quite a lot of um animators and work and um creative directors on this film and so again um i've taken a liking to these um film posters so it says somewhere under the sea and beyond your imagination is an adventure in fantasy um and i think that that really plays into the element that i was talking about at the beginning of this video with um the kind of wondering about the ocean and the mystery and the intrigue that it rings in so um, changes between versions. Um, names is a really big one. In the written version, there really are no names. Um, Ariel is not the Little Mermaid. She's just called the Little Mermaid. Ursula is not the sea, is not the sea witch in the written version. She's just the sea witch. In the written version, Eric is just the prince. He's not Prince Eric. He's just the prince. So um, this kind of brings in a question, brings in a question of is there a personal relationship to these named characters? When we attribute a name to a character, we can, you know, refer to them a little bit more easier than a little easier than, um, you know, just the Little Mermaid, and so it kind of adds this um, personal layer and um, 
I think also humanizes these characters and brings them a little bit closer to reality um, and plays into that imagination and the imaginative part of literature. Additionally, Ursula um, in this, in the uh, movie, in the Disney movie version of the story, Ursula plays a much bigger role as the antagonist. In Anderson's version, Ursula is still depicted as evil, but those qualities are much more dramatic in the film. I mean, if we look here at the lower right image of Ursula, um, she does have this evil, um, these evil connotations with her. We see some like scary big teeth and these tentacles and um, these, you know, the red lipstick with the bold um, eyeshadow and eyeliner and these kind of bold characteristics. Um, and so this kind of relates to the question of, do we need the antagonist to kind of develop a more entertaining story? Do we need the antagonist to play such a big role? Um, and so how does Ursula enhance this story? How does Ursula's character becoming such a big role make it so that the story is more interesting for kids and adults alike. Additionally, we see polarized spaces. Um, in the movie, land is a forbidden place um, that mermaids and the sea life are not allowed to um, interact with or go look at. Um, but in the written version, it's expected that mermaids visit the surface on their 15th birthday. And so in the written version, um, the little mermaid swims to the surface and that's where she sees Prince Eric for the first time and falls in love. Um, or just the prince, not Prince Eric. Um, but yeah, so we see this kind of dichotomy between land and sea. Um, even more, the violence is definitely dialed back in the Disney version. Um, in the story, the Little Mermaid has to suffer the pain of feeling like there are knives in her feet to assume the form of a human. This plays no role in the movie, and there's no mention of it um, in the story. Additionally, if the Little Mermaid fails to marry the prince, she will die and become sea foam. Um, in the movie, Ursula will just own her if she doesn't end up um, falling in love with Prince Eric. Um, so obviously there are different ideas of, you know, violence attributed to each respective version. Um, additionally, an even happier ending. So obviously we talked about the kind of um, happy tragedy that the, um, the literature is known for, but the movie, um, Ariel and Eric get married and Ursula's dead. Peace is established between the worlds and they all lived happily ever after. While in the story, the Little Mermaid is just honored for her sacrifice and will work her way to heaven. Um, still a happy ending, but the um, Disney movie kind of gets its Disney happy ending um, in it as well. Additionally, we see Fish Are Friends. We are introducing friendly characters that add comic layers to the story that children enjoy. Um, we see this throughout many different pieces of literature, um, the friendly attributes of um, the dwarves in Snow White, um, the animals in Cinderella that become the friends of Cinderella. Um, so this is a consistent theme of adding animals. And um, I think people, I think Disney really paid attention to the fact that so many people enjoyed these friendly animals and got joy and excitement out of that. And so they kept re, re like they kept incorporating these into this, um, these movies, but I do not know that for a fact. Um, so these are my sources. Thank you for watching. Um, move on to the um, reflection questions uh, make sure to make sure to use the ans the answers that you kind of think of in the um before action reflection questions to inform your answers um in the post reflection as well um thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next lecture